Welcome everybody. In today's video I'll be covering how to edit your WordPress uh, functions so that you can make a, um, a working menu using uh, Foundation by Zurb. So by default WordPress does not, um, the WordPress menus will not, or the Foundation menus will not work because of how the class tags are organized. So let me show you guys the navigation here and how it works for the, um, the top bar in Foundation. So these dropdowns are controlled by a, um, a tag called a dropdown. So if you go down here and look at the um, code, you'll see that the UL class is dropdown. Now by default, WordPress uses a um, a tag called submenu or a class tag called submenu that you're going to have to edit and that uh, requires a functions.php file being created. So um, what you'll need is of course an FTP browser like FileZilla for instance and uh, access to your WordPress installation via FTP the first thing you're going to want to look at, though, is under um, WP includes in the root folder of WordPress. So the um, and then the file in there is called navmenutemplate.php. So let's look at that navmenutemplate. And what you're going to be looking at is the uh, code here, start level and end level. And we're going to take this, and by default, of course, it has a class tag of sub tack menu. And we're going to need to change it so that it will have a tag of drop down, as I have here on my website. Which is uh, so by default that would have been, that would have been called uh, submenu. All right, so let's get started on that. If you go into uh, your themes, go ahead and edit the one that you're working on, and uh, in the editor here. Now I already have the functions.php file here, so it's visible. But by default, you'll need to uh, create it and upload it. I suggest just creating a uh, uh, a blank uh, PHP file and you'll want to um, edit that preferably in a text editor so that you can um, check to make sure that your uh, code is functional. Now um, a word to the wise here if you make a mistake in your functions.php file you will break your WordPress installation as I am about to do right here. If you make that mistake, you've broken your back end and your front end. You won't be able to uh, make any changes. So in that case, you'll have to go into your themes folder. And since you can't change your theme when it's broken, you'll have to go into your theme that you edited and you will want to delete the um, functions file that you just created. Now once you delete that file and you reload, you'll see that, I, well I got a different kind of error message this time, but um, my uh, system is now, or my blog is now running again. Let's go into the editor and you'll notice that the functions file is missing. So I'm going to go and upload that right now and then I'll show you guys the edits I made to it. So let's do this really quick. Oh, shoot, I think I just dropped that in my J into my JS folder. One second, let me get, yep. Don't want to do that be useless if it's in the wrong folder. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we're using uh, this as a reference point, so we're going to essentially just copy and paste 
the information here and here into the functions file. So what we'll be looking at is here and here respectively. I took out all the um, the comments that were in the original uh, default here, which is all the version control stuff wasn't necessary, and then I just essentially marked my changes. So um, copied the source code, changed it to drop down. You don't want to change it in nav menu template because very likely the submenu class is being used by the uh, WordPress uh, admin end so by changing that class tag you'll probably break some admin menus. So never change the files in your uh, WP includes file. Basically um, a good rule of thumb with WordPress is only edit stuff that's within your WP content folder and um, only if you know what you're essentially uh, working on. I've never used Sedlex. I've gone in and edited plugins and themes, but that's about about it. Okay. So once we've edited that function file, this will allow us to uh, build get the menu working. So bef let's reload here, and my functions file has now reappeared. Now I'm going to copy this to my clipboard because I want to show you what happens when the uh, menus aren't working correctly. So I'll go here and view the site. And uh, essentially I, uh, I broke it. I must have taken, oh, there we go. Probably took out more than I needed. So what happens is it, it was probably looking for the functions file and not finding it. Okay, well let's change this back to the default method. So this would actually, basically this functions file will override the, um, the menu template. So changing it back to its default on submenu, you'll end up with something kind of like this. All the menus will be open and expanded or some kind of strange error. And that's essentially because without that drop-down class tag, um, the JavaScript or the CSS doesn't know what to do with those, and it'll just build a list. So we got it working. Good. Okay. Let's move back a little bit. So yeah, again, the only change was uh, drop-down. Now right here, let me delete this really quick. I wanted to um, show you guys how to register men your menu so you can edit it. So since we're creating our theme from scratch, WordPress is pretty basic. You'll notice that the menu option disappeared. So I'll paste that back in, update the file, and suddenly menus appears. Now this of course gives you your uh, edit menus folder, your manage locations, and you'll now be able to edit the file, the uh, the menu. Oops. So there's two things that's happening here. You're giving it a name, header menu, and then you're telling it to register that menu. So in the show notes, I'll uh, um, have links to how this uh, works, so you could read up on it. It's a little bit too much to um, show. But essentially what it does is it will uh, not only create the admin portion on the panel, but it will also allow you to dictate where to put the menu. So if I was to un um, untack header menu there, save my menu, load my page, it goes to the default menu. And since I only have one menu uh, installed, uh, of course it's the one that I have created. So that's how you get your menus working. Now before I uh, go, I want to show you guys another um, cool feature um, in WordPress, and that is the um, get template, no, not get template, yes, get template part tab, tag. 
Now, uh, originally, I uh, in my first video, I just had an index and a um, and a styles.css. But as you build your theme, you probably want to make things more portable, so that way you don't have to edit index uh, heavily. You can create your index template, make it the bare necessities for the design, and um, and go in and create a custom header. So what this will essentially do is call in your header custom file. So if you follow me here, header custom and then header and custom. Now if I misspell this, oops. Then what you will see is that my um, my blog falls apart. Now that's because of the typo, of course. Now if I misspell header and update the file, everything's going to go to hell. Well, ironically, it's the exact same problem. So. So what happens here is the first word is, of course, the first word in the file. And if that's misspelled, it's going to look for the misspelling PHP file. And by default, if it doesn't find uh, the file, it'll default to header. So that's essentially why I left um, header in there. I also did the same thing with footer. And what I did here was I created um, these two respective files, footer custom. And, you know, I'm going to put in the... Um, the modernizer and the jQuery requirements for foundation which they state on their website as well as in the header I'm going to put the uh, default CSS so this git template part allows me to um, you know uh, make my code more portable when I go into and create uh, alternate versions of templates for pages and posts this will allow me to essentially only change uh, the middle area here where I'm doing the sizing on small and large 8. And that's a git template part. Personally I think it's probably uh, the second most important if not the most important part of WordPress is being able to um, create include files in such a way. And um, you'll see that I also create a loop custom because I'm trying to learn how the loop works and I just grabbed it, some code off of the um, WordPress forums on how to create a basic loop so that um, my theme will show all of the posts on the home page and I think it's set for their entirety by default so later on I'll want to go and customize the loop maybe create a couple different versions so that maybe I can show more and less information as needed so with a little bit of work uh, in uh, the span of two videos and a couple weeks of uh, research off and on, I've been uh, playing Grand Theft Auto V a lot late, late, lately, so that's uh, slowed me down a bit. You can see that I now have a responsive theme with WordPress. I've got my mobile version here. The menus are functional. And all I had to do was create um, a function file. I am forgetting one step, though. Let me go back. There is, um, you need to actually go in and activate. And I skipped in my header file some coding that I did that I did not mention. Let's go back there really quick. If you go into header custom, you'll see that I have the uh, top bar, the title area, the li name, class name, all this information that foundation mentions here for their uh, top bar functionality followed by this little PHP snippet here which is uh, basically telling it to pull in the walker uh, information that I edited in functions. So this is basically a call out for the new custom walker nav menu which again in functions is these two changes. So without those two uh, 
parts working together, if I go into header custom and simply um, delete that, should break my um, my menu. Yes, it did. So you got some breakage here. The uh, hard-coded stuff there. So it's really a two-part process, having to put something in the header and in functions. Now, function the functions file again is it will allow you to not only edit the base WordPress uh, functionality, but also introduce new functionality. So later on in in uh, later videos, I might do a um, slideshow carousel for or or um, a modal for videos to pop in and pop down. I might do a uh, flex video uh, grid. Go into the foundation documentation and you will see that there's a lot of like scripting um, possibilities in foundation. So my goal actually is to go in and make it so that I could eventually um, create slideshows that are easy to create either as plugins or short codes. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the um, in the video uh, comments, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.